hijinks in the water oh! and a scolding from the boss. I've been out there mucking around, so I'm not really impressed. Big trouble in big surf. Yeah, I'm stuck out here. The skis ran over the rope. And one very happy customer. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Two and a half million people visit Bondi every year. Many are tourists with a simple dream to catch a wave for the very first time. Some try body surfing. Others rent surfboards. But the most popular choice is the humble boogie board. But boogie boards can pose big problems. People who can't swim, people who would drown in a bathtub are allowed to go out there on these plastic little things with Spider-Man pictures on them and all that. And they cost 12 bucks and they wouldn't save a cockroach. Many beginners battle to just stay on. Lifeguards call this boogie board wrestling. Boogie board wrestlers, it's actually a sport. It's almost going to catch up to the UFC. It's one of the biggest sports worldwide. The rules are simple. You have to put the arm rope on your ankle and you've got to jump in the rip and just go for it. You and the bodyboard, mono a mono. Extra points if they're covered in Hawaiian Tropic coconut oil. As it has actually... The degree of difficulty goes from like a, a five to a ten. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. You see a grown man walk into the ocean holding a bodyboard and he comes out completely defeated by a piece of foam. The bodyboards just beat this bloke no, and he's no. swimming away from it. The bodyboards just chasing him. Like all sports, the ref steps in when someone's about to get hurt. But bodyboard wrestling can be a lethal sport. He looks like he can't paddle whatsoever, but then as soon as he loses the board, he panics. Yeah, I'm going to have to go, eh? He's struggling, Jeff. A boogie boarder is swept out in a rip 100 metres from shore. Beardy takes an educated guess. You can't swim, can you? No, no. Give it to me. Trusting a flimsy bit of foam could have proved fatal. Another victim of boogie board wrestling. And the winner. The boogie board. Oh, yeah, yeah, the boogie board beat you. I'm better on snowboard, quand même. I prefer the Alpes. It's more simple. Au pire, the avalanches, on les connaît. Les vagues, c'est compliqué, quand même. Oh, wow! Je... Non, on s'est fait pas, mon gars. Genre, en deux secondes, tu fais genre tout la vague. Being on a bodyboard in a rip is kind of like hanging on to a hot air balloon and getting lifted off the ground. You don't want to let go because you're going to get hurt. But then the longer you hang on, the more worse situation you're going to be in. A hot Saturday afternoon. More boogie board wrestlers enter the ring. Then, the inevitable. Hey, jet ski. Here you go, Mate, out the back of backpackers, a bloke has just lost his bodyboard. He's getting hit by that one now. Jesse spots the unmanned boogie board. Now, he needs to find the owner. Yeah. Right up the back, he's going backwards, just near the sets. The owner can't swim. The Irish backpacker was seconds from going under. Jesse's done good on the ski, eh? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, go ahead, mate. Thank you very much. Let's go so much. Cry, thank you so much. Yeah, good one, mate. A $10 slither of foam. A tourist who can't swim. A rip. It's a recipe for drowning. It's a good feeling, you know. Just pretty much he was going under and I had to cut the kill switch on the jet ski and pull him up, so... Sick, stoked. It's been four months since the kid from the wrong side of the tracks was given a fresh start at Bondi. You spent some time on the front line. 
Now Jesse needs to prove he's mature enough to be a professional lifeguard. He's a part of the team, he wants to stay there, and he knows after another year, the trainee ships up, and he needs to perform to get on to be an actual lifeguard. Jesse's shown he can handle serious rescues, but it hasn't stopped him having fun. Jesse and former trainee Maxie have become good mates. In downtime, the dynamic duo tested a mini surfboard with mixed results. Oh, straight off, like a duck. Now, they've been inspired by a new challenge. It's a lot bigger than I thought. A new way of catching a wave. We're going to head out there and uh, just paddle, wait for a set, and either try the and best. catch it. Yeah, either try, try, try and catch, catch it, it or just hold on. Cop it on the head. But this is no surf craft. It's so calm and pleasant there, but I like to see how it goes in onshore and four can... to six foot waves. On a rainy day lunch break, the dynamic duo proceed to launch. Double overhead surf and a strong southerly wind. Ideal conditions for staying on land. I can see a long swim back to civilization coming up. Anything can happen here. Anything. The first wave in a set starts to peak. Here we go, here we go. But they're not quite on. They can definitely catch a good one. Jesus they, they just go in straight. They could nail a big one from a pocket handle a cup. An error it is. Then a big wave looms behind. They don't know there's an even bigger one behind it. No, 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 not this one. The no. second one's going to break on the head. Facing oblivion, there's only one course of action. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that landed right on him, man. But Jesse and Maxie have much more to worry about than a bad wipeout. I'm looking down at two of the guys that went to lunch a while ago now, it's been sort of well over an hour now that they've uh, been out there mucking around. Yeah, they're basically out of play being lifeguards and probably irresponsible of them and, and not showing respect towards, you know, team leaders and, and also myself. Especially, it's basically just doing it right in front of me. So I'm not really impressed. Head lifeguard Hoppo is not happy. When guys push the, the limit and go over the line, it's um, something to me is disrespectful because they get a good run. And even though we're all mates, it's a there's a professional job to be done here. So I'm going to have to uh, pull the two guys in and, and have a chat with them. But I saw the boat there. I'm like, yes. Yeah, Was the, the boat even over the right way when you nah, we flipped it? Yeah, the we'll... scolding will wait. Meanwhile, Jesse and Maxie get on with their real job. Hoppo has asked them to collect some marker boys in the bay. Yeah, mate, go and grab the boys. Copy, we'll do that. Jesse collects the first boy. He cuts the engine to avoid sucking rope into the jet intake. But he didn't cut the engine early enough. The rope is caught in the intake. Jesse puts the ski in reverse to try and blow the rope back out. Big swell and growing darkness, it's a dire situation. And I'm stuck out here. The skis ran over the rope. Lifeguards launch the second jet ski. If 
one of these sets comes through and cleans him up, he could, the ski would get totaled or the ski could get washed up the rocks. Can you get it out? Straight up the jet. As Jesse flounders, the rescue party can't make it through the waves. It's going to take them a while to get through this break in the skis. Three of them on there. Shit, the boys are struggling there to get through. Popo watches silently as lifeguards are forced to rescue one of their own. It's getting dark really quickly here. Yeah, shark bait out there. I'm stuck out here, but the ski's ran over the road. Jesse's trying to pull the cans in, and he's got the uh, rope sucked up the intake of the jet ski. Rookie mistake. The boss is not happy. As darkness approaches, Jesse is stranded 400 metres from shore in huge seas. Oh, look at this set coming through now. rescue team can't get out. Finally, a lull in the waves. and cut it out of the engine. The boy is cut loose, but the rope is still caught in the intake. The stricken jet ski is now a 400 kilogram dead weight in eight foot surf. Towing it to shore is too dangerous. There's only one alternative. They're gonna have to surf it in, which should be interesting. With light fading fast, Maxi and Dino kick to shore. A wave looms. But spares them. We're in a good spot there, anyway. If they get any further, they'll be getting white wash. At the most critical point, finally, some luck. <laughs> they've got the best wall in the day. Just behind the white wash. Suddenly, a wave peaks. Lifeguard's instincts kick in. Run away. They're on away. They got it. The rescue quickly becomes folklore. There's a god. There is a god. What happened? There? The biggest lull of the day. We're oh, bringing it in. Eight that, eh? foot set. Oh mate. We oh. kicked out waited for the massive set to come through, and then I said, go, go hard, because you've got to get through that impact zone. Could be deadly. Perhaps Maxi's search for the ultimate ride is over. That is, my friends, the ultimate ride right there. <laughs> with no engine. <laughs> well, mate, mate, next big day. No ski, engine with no ski. But there's no celebration for Jesse. I thought I was going, I thought I was going to lose a $20,000 jet ski, mate. I was just... It's a heavy feeling, I'll tell you that. Yeah, eh? Hey. That is the ultimate surf craft to ride in. Hey? Next day, Maxie and Jesse patrol nearby Tamarama. But there's an unexpected visitor.
bien, chavo. <laughs> you know what I'm over here for today? To see you too? I was watching from the office and saw the hour turned to two hours. When we come in, as soon as we hit the sand and like, you know, the fun was over, we kind of knew we had to face the music. And... Instead of um, coming over and having a shower and facing the music, me and Maxi just had a shower and hosed off underneath the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we had that, the incident with Jess later on that night with the rope and... Yeah, I don't know if it was just the God, you know, the God sent down that he wanted Hoppo to be angry at me again, so, yeah. <laughs> It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good feeling, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for the day hop, you know, I, it was pretty childish of what we'd done. And it's good to have a little bit of fun, but it depends, you don't push that fun that little bit further and, and go over the line. It's not good being on the boss's wrong side and just, you've got to think of the bigger picture, because most of the things that are fun, you know, there is bigger pictures where you can get hurt and, you know, yeah, it's not good. I don't think, uh... We'll be rafting any time soon. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll have to go on a holiday to go rafting. <laughs> back at Bondi, the boogie board wrestlers are back in the ring. Azza patrols a dangerous rip. He spots a man who has lost his boogie board. rescued with moments to spare. But then, more trouble. A second man loses his boogie board. He can't swim either. But with a patient on board, Azza can't move quickly. The two friends are migrants from India. They haven't picked up any swimming skills. But they have picked up the local lingo. Uh, good one, mate. Good. Reunited with their boards, neither are in a hurry to get back in the water. Uh, the look in your eyes when as soon as you let that board go. Yeah. No, I, I, I should let it go. Because my friend is shouting and I'm going to rescue him. You're going to rescue him, but you can't no, swim. No, I swim. You can swim. Yeah, I can swim. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to take him out. But then the wave is coming me all this way. I know what's going on. So how are you going to rescue him? On my hand. <laughs> I can't, Mike. Yeah. I can't hear. <laughs> oh, it's good that you look out for your mates. <laughs> Another boogie board wrestler licks his wounds. Meanwhile, at the kids' end of Bondi, Jesse and Maxie teach some boogie board basics. Next time you go in, boys, make sure you stay close to shore. All right? Go between the flags. Yep. Not only here, every other beach, OK? Never let go of your board. Always hold on to your board, all right? They were alright, they just, they had fun coming in on the board. This time, the boss is in a better mood. Ernie and Bert. Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually looks like that, actually. Yeah. Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie, mate. <laughs> Don't get it wrong. I'll come out on the beach to have a quiet, nice, you know, bit down north to check it out, and what happens? Bert and Ernie turn up. And <laughs> in your little car, <laughs> huh? I'm Ernie. <laughs> Max is Bert. <laughs> Big tall gangly thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Muppet Show's on the, the Muppet Show, yeah. Gonzo's in the tower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>